Hey, how's going everyone? This is Ed. If you want to have stable PlayStation 2 emulation on your Steam Deck, this video is for you. I will walk you through setting up the standalone PS2 emulator on the Steam Deck. If you are currently using the Emule Deck for the PlayStation 2 game, I will show you how to move the game save files from Emule Deck to the standalone emulator at the last section of this video, so you can keep playing from what you left on the Emule Deck. With the standalone emulator, you were still able to launch your PS2 games directly from the Steam Deck gaming mode, just like you would with normal Steam PC games. Don't get me wrong, I am not an Emule Deck hater. I have already made about 20 videos about Emule Deck on this channel. Emule Deck is a great software most of the time, especially when you are looking to emulate a lot of gaming consoles. The Emule Deck will set up all emulators for you in just under a few minutes. But if you only play 2 or 3 emulators on your Steam Deck, then the standalone emulator is just the best option out there. It will take a little bit more time to set up the standalone emulator in the first place, but you have less hassle to deal with in the long term. Just to be clear, the standalone emulator will not give you extra performance over Emule Deck, it just runs directly from the emulator itself without another soft layer on the top. So you don't have to deal with all the passers, Steam Room Manager, and Emule Deck update stuff anymore. If you follow this guide to set up the standalone PS2 emulator, you were able to use the four back buttons on the Steam Deck to quickly access the emulator's menu, change the game upscale level, and swipe between different screen ratio. Everything is just next to your fingertip. Without further delay, now let's set up the standalone PS2 emulator on your Steam Deck. First, let's create a PS2 emulation folder on your Steam Deck. You can create this folder on your internal SSD or on the SD card. Here, I will create the folder on my SD card. You can name this folder anything you like. Here, I will just name as PS2 emulation. Then go inside the PS2 emulation folder and create two folders here. The first one will name as games. The second one will name as BIOS. Then I will copy my PS2 BIOS files and games from my external hard drive into these two folders. But you don't have to use an external hard drive. So the main goal here is to move the BIOS file into the BIOS folder here and move the game ROM files into the games folder we just created. Just remember Steam Deck is a PC so you can use your Steam Deck download anything you want. So here just make sure you move the PS2 BIOS files into the BIOS folder we just created. Then move your PS2 game ROM files into the games folder. As demonstration purpose here I will just copy two games into the games folder. If you want to add more games later on just drop the PS2 game ROMs into the games folder. For the PS2 game ROMs and BIOS files you are on your own to find them because they are copyrighted so I'm not able to tell you where to get them. Once you have the BIOS and the game ROMs are copied into the correct folder, then we can close everything here. Next, go to the PC SX2 website from your internet browser. The website is linked under this video description. Then click on the latest 90 here. Next, click App Image. The PS2 emulator app image file should be downloaded just in few seconds. Then we can open this file in the download folder. Then select this file and move it into our PS2 emulation folder. Of course, you can do all those files in different ways. This is just how I manage my emulation files. Then we can double click on the PC SX2 app image file. Click execute here. Then click continue. On the first page, I will leave everything by default here, unless you want to change the language here. I think the dark theme looks great on the Steam Deck. Then just click next. On this page, it will ask you to set up your BIOS file directory, so here just click the browser button, then navigate to your BIOS folder we just created. If your PS2 emulation folder is created on your SD card, then you can just follow what I am doing here. So once you get into the BIOS folder we created, then click choose button. Now your BIOS file will be detected inside this box here. Make sure you select the BIOS file here. Then click next. So on this page, we have to set up our game ROMs folder. Also on this page, it shows all the supported game ROM formats here. 
So make sure your game ROMs are belong to one of those formats here. Then click the Add button and navigate to the games folder we created. Make sure you go inside the games folder and then click the choose button. Click yes on this message. Now the system will scan all your game ROMs. Then click next. Here we will set up the controller. Make sure the controller type is set to DualShock 2. Then click on automatic mapping and make sure you select SDL-0 Steam Virtual Gamepad. Then click next. And the setup is complete, just click finish. Now the PS2 emulator will boot up and you should see all your games inside the game list. At this point, we have successfully installed the standalone PS2 emulator onto your Steam Deck. Now let's tweak some setting and make the PS2 emulation on the Steam Deck feels great. Let's go to settings, then select interface. Under Game Display, make sure you check the box in front Start Full Screen. Then move to the Graphics tab. Under Display, make sure you change the Aspect Ratio to Full Screen. Then turn on Enable Widescreen Patch. Next, go to the Rendering tab. Change the internal resolution to 2 times. Then we can close this window. Next, we are going to set some hotkeys for the PS2 emulation so we can use the back buttons on the Steam Deck to do some quick setting during the gameplay. This is the way I prefer to set the hotkey. You can also set the way you like. Ok, let's go to settings, then click hotkeys. I will only configure 4 hotkeys here. Just use the back button on the Steam Deck. Also, you have to use the keyboard here to configure the hotkeys. So the first hotkey I'm going to configure here is Open Pause Menu. So once we press this button, it will open up the PS2 emulation menu during the gameplay. So we just have to click on this bar here, and then press any key on your keyboard. Here I will assign this menu to F9. Then I will just move the page down to Tango Software Rendering. Here I will change this to a random key here, because the default key is set to F9, which is conflict with the menu hotkey I just set. So here I will just set this to key number 1. Then set the increase upscale multiply to F10. And set the decrease upscale multiply to F11. The last hotkey we are going to set is the cycle aspect ratio. So we will set this to F12. That's all the hotkey I personally prefer to set. Then we can close this window and also close the emulator. Now we are going to add the PS2 games into the Steam Deck gaming mode, so we can launch the PS2 game just like normal PC games. So just go to our PS2 emulation folder, then select the PS2 app image file. Right click and select add to Steam. Then we can open the Steam, and go to the library. The PC SX2 app image should show up under your library. I will reorganize my window a little bit here, just for easy explanation here. So now I will go to my PS2 emulation games folder and just check the game title I have here. So on the left side is my Steam. We just added the PC SX2 app image into the library. So here I will select the app image file and then select the gear icon. Next, go to the properties. On this page, we will put our game name into the first box here. Then go back to your games folder and select your game ROM. Then right click. On this menu, click copy location. Next, go back to the Steam window and paste everything into the launch option. Then bring your mouse cursor all the way to the front. Then add a double quotation mark here. Then move your mouse cursor all the way to the end and add another double quotation here. Next, add a space here. Then type in another double quotation, dash, no GUI, then quotation mark. That's all we need to change here. Then we can close this window. Then I will just repeat the same process for the second game.
Just remember, every time if you want to add a new game, we have to add the PC SX2 app image into the Steam. Then we modify the launch option. I'm not going to explain the second game again here, but I will just demonstrate what I'm doing here. Ok, now we already have two PS2 games added into our Steam library. Now let's switch back to the gaming mode. Once we get back to the gaming mode, just go to the Steam library. Under no Steam game, we should see our PS2 game show up here. Then we can select either one from here and just launch the game from here. So here we will map the back button with our hotkeys. Once the game is booted up, just press the Steam button. Then go to the controller settings. On this page, select Edit Layout. Then under Buttons and go to the back grips. And map the rear button as I show on the screen. Once the mapping is done, then just press button B and go back to this page. And then go to the gear icon and select export layout. Put a layout title here, I will call it PS2 control. Then under export type, select new template. Then click confirm. So the reason why we create a template here is we can apply this template to every single PS2 game on your Steam Deck. So you don't have to map in the hotkey for every single game. Now we can press button B and back to the game. Now if I press the rear button on my Steam Deck, the hotkey will be functional. The L4 button is mapped to the PS2 emulator menu. So you can call out this menu anytime during the gameplay. The R4 button is mapped to swiping between different screen ratio. So when you press the R4 button, you will see the screen ratio is keeping changing. The L5 and R5 buttons are mapped to decrease or increase upscale level. I think most of PS2 game image looks pretty good with 3 times multiply. But if your game are running slow, so you can quickly decrease upscale level. So that's all for how the hotkey works. If you want to apply the hotkeys to other PS2 games, so make sure you reboot your Steam Deck first. So the reason why we are rebooting the system, because in order to have the controller layout we created to show up in the Steam OS, we have to reboot the system. After the system is rebooted, now launch the second game. Once the game is loaded up, then press the Steam button and go to controller settings. Then click gamepad with joystick trackpad. Then under the templates, just move all the way down, you should find the PS2 controls we created previously. So the reason why we reboot the Steam Deck previously is because we just want to have the templates show up here. Also, you don't have to reboot the Steam Deck for the third game. The template will be in your system from now on. So when you launch the third game, just go to the control settings and then just apply this PS2 control template. So here, make sure you press the X button first. Then press the X button again to apply this layout. Now, if we go back to the game, the rear button on the Steam Deck will work as our hotkey. That's how we apply the hotkeys to other PS2 games. At this point, you should be able to successfully emulate any PS2 games on your Steam Deck. The last thing we should do is add some game artwork use the Steam Deck plugin called Steam Grid DB. If you have no idea about the Steam Deck plugin, you can check out this video on my channel. It will take you less than 2 minutes to install the Steam Deck plugin. So I'm not going to show you how to install the Steam Deck plugin Steam Grid DB here. Once you have the Steam Deck Grid DB, just go to each game and apply the game artwork. Once you have the game artwork applied, your PS2 game will just look like a normal PC game on your Steam Deck. This is going to be the final step, so we're gonna set up the game save pass. 
This is very critical, so make sure you do this step. Otherwise, you may lose your give save once you factory reset your Steam Deck. If you are using the Emu Deck for your PS2 emulation right now, I will show you how to transfer the save file from Emu Deck to the standalone emulator in this section. Ok, let's go to your standalone PS2 emulation folder. We will create two folders here, the first one called saves. This folder will be used for our normal give save file. The second folder will be named as states. This folder will be for our save states. So make sure you have those two folders created under your PS2 emulation folder. Then double click on the PS2 emulator app image file. Next, go to settings, then click on folders. On this page, go to save states directory, then click the browser button and navigate to your PS2 emulation folder. Just make sure you follow the path as I show on the screen. Once you get into your PS2 emulation folder, then go inside the states folder and click the choose button. Next, from the left side, click the memory card. Then under the memory card, click the browser button. Again, we have to navigate to our PS2 emulation folder. Once you get into the PS2 emulation folder, then go inside the saves folder and click the choose button. Now we have successfully set the game save path for the PS2 emulator and they are all stored on your SD card. So if there is something wrong with your Steam Deck and you have to factory reset the system, you will not lose your game save files. Ok, next I will show you how to transfer the save files from Emu Deck to the standalone emulator. This is only for people who are switching from the Emu Deck to the standalone emulator. So let's go to your emulation folder. Then go to Saves folder. Go inside the PC SX2 folder. Then select those two folders here and copy them. And then go back to your PS2 emulation folder and paste them here. Click Apply to All and then click Write Into. Now your PS2 save from Emu Deck has been successfully transferred to the standalone emulator. That's pretty much all for this one. I have covered everything you need to set up the PS2 emulator on the Steam Deck. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I never thought this video will hit around 20 minutes and it took me about 45 hours to make this video. If you think this is helpful, please don't forget hit the like button and thanks for being here.